All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Rover Science Revisited, which is being made by forum user The Spear. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a new interactive method for gaining your science using a rover. And I love this mod, as basically how it works is you get a new little bit of scientific equipment that you attach to your rover and then you drive around on whatever planetary body you happen to be on scanning for a scientific hotspot or a scientific anomaly whatever you want to call it once you find it you drive to it scan it do your science and then once collected you move on to find another and i love how this works as it is a far more interactive and engaging method to doing your science research than our typical right click on a mystery goo canister hit a button and yay we've collected science and so i always love when mods add in these new ways and methodologies of going about things and making science especially more interactive. It's one of my favorite things in the game. And now, of course, because it is a sciencey mod, I've brought us into a career mode save as, well, what better place to take advantage of science? And since we are in here, I probably should show you in the research and development center how you get your hands on the part which makes the rover science possible. Now you're actually gonna have to go pretty far down into the tech tree here to electronics, where you'll find our new part, the Robo Brain, which you may have already noticed since it's sitting right next to it here. It's exactly the same as the accelerometer in its modeling and also its stats, even the price is the same. It's just this does rover science this does seismic science, so that's really the only difference. Now, hopefully in the future, we'll get a custom model for this thing at some point, but frankly, I wouldn't hold my breath because this mod actually is quite old. It's about two years old at this point, and it was actually abandoned for quite some time, and the uh, mod maker has recently resurrected the mod, bringing it back to the latest version of Kerbal Space Program, which makes me happy because I remember this mod back in the day. I loved it. It and just never got around to doing a video of it. So here we are now. So yes, electronics. That is where you're going to want to go for the rover brain. Now let's quickly jump out of here and into the VAB to show you how to attach it to your vehicle because it's not quite the same as most scientific parts. So once you have whatever your rover is going to be in place here, of course, head down to the science tab where you'll find the rover brain. And again, maybe double check to make sure you're not grabbing a seismic accelerometer. But yes, the rover brain here. Now normally you just kind of put any science bit of equipment on here however you'd like. But this needs to be put on in a specific way. This little round bit right here is the front of the rover brain. And it needs to be pointing at the front of the rover. So if this was our rover we were building, this would most likely be the front, this would be the back, so we would need to actually rotate this around so that the circle is facing towards the front. So that is just something to keep in mind and that I do need to stress. I don't know why it needs to be in the front, I guess because it is trying to positionally scan things in the environment, uh, but it is of course stressed in the instructions for this mod that it needs to be facing forward. So just keep that in mind whenever you're building it, and uh, yeah, you should be good to go. Now as for other stats, as I said, all the uh, technical bits and bobs are identical to the accelerometer, so I won't go through that, but as for over here, it does technically count as an unmanned command pod, so we can control our rover from it, and it will consume about 3.5 uh, electric charge per hour there, and yeah, it can be easily offset by some solar panels, so you should be good to go. Now, that's basically all I need to show you in here, so let's quickly jump over to the tracking station, where I have put a little rover science rover onto the moon to actually show off how this all works. And it's a pretty simple process, honestly, but there are a few things we do need to go through that are uh, a bit more complicated. So to actually get this all started, you're going to have to find your rover brain. Right-click on it 
and then toggle the rover terminal. And that will bring up our rover science UI. And this is how the mod actually functions. To actually scan anomalies, this needs to be open. So this is the next thing I need to stress. This rover terminal has to stay open. If you close it, it will not scan for scientific anomalies. It will just be you driving a rover and that's it. So to actually scan and find scientific things, this needs to stay open on your, uh, you know, UI. That's that's basically it there. Now, as for what all this means, the top bit here is the science spots analyze, which is currently zero because I haven't scanned anything on this new save file. We then have science loss due to reuse, which currently is a zero percent, which is a good thing. And I'll talk more about this momentarily. We then have our instructions here of drive around to search for science spots. And then finally, our current scanning range of 100 meters. Now you can adjust that scanning range down here by just typing in whatever range you'd like, up to, of course, a maximum of 100. And once you have that typed, you simply need to set your scanning range right there with that button. Now, I probably have just missed something in the instructions for this, but I don't know what the purpose would be of making it smaller than the maximum. Personally, at all the time I've been using this mod, I've just had it set to the max. It seems to work purely fine just doing it that way. But perhaps there is some small hidden benefit to making a uh, smaller scan range. But for me, I just set it to the full max and you're good to go. Now the next button we have is the upgrade menu. And this is quite a cool thing here because, well, it's an upgrade menu. You can actually make your rover science better than the default. So we have three different categories here, the first being the maximum scan distance, which is awesome. So you can see here, our current is 100. The next level up is 500 meters, and it's gonna cost you 250. Now that 250 is science points. So this is something you kinda gotta weigh the benefits and downsides of when you're doing a career mode save or a science save file. You can upgrade your rover to be able to find and do more sciencey things, but it's gonna cost you points in the very science you're collecting. So it's a balancing act of how much you want to use for the rover compared to how much you want to use for everything else that you want to do in the game. And so that's definitely something to keep in mind. And all you need to do to upgrade is simply hit this up button right here. Now I'm just going to leave it to the defaults for everything for the time being. Uh, but you know, that's, uh, that's basically how you upgrade it. Now the next one is the prediction accuracy. And that is basically when we find anomaly it's going to try to predict how much science you're going to get out of it and the current is 10 percent and you can up that to 20 percent accuracy again for a cost of 400 upgrade that and the next one is analyze decay limit now this goes to this right here and it's quite interesting because basically the more you use this science rover the less effective it's going to be. Because every anomaly you scan, it's basically diminishing returns. Now the first couple of scans you do, specifically for this one as it's the base model, for the first two scans we do, we're not gonna get any decay for analyzing an anomaly. But once we hit the third scan, it's not going to give us as much science and subsequently the fourth and fifth scan etc will give you less and less science as you go along but of course you can upgrade that if you have plenty of extra science but the thing is it's very costly and it's only really going to help you for one more scan at a time which you can find some very impressive bits of science with this mod i'm not entirely sure what the maximum potentially is but i've gotten everything from 10 science in an anomaly to about a hundred so you could find some pretty good stuff here but still eventually it's going to decay as you go along but I should also mention something here. Now, it does it's not affected by this decay limit, but it is something interesting to note. Now, like I said, the more anomalies we do, the more it decays. But alternatively, the farther you go with the rover, the more science you get. So wherever your rover actually lands on the planet, 
it counts that as the landing spot for this rover. And the farther away you go from that landing spot, the more of a benefit of your science you're going to get. Now you have to go pretty far for it to be a big percentage, but hey, if you're on a long-term mission, you have that rover up there for months or even years, coming back to it occasionally, just collect more science, it could very much be worth it. But that's uh, you know, just something to know, because you do have the decay limit for the number of anomalies scanned, but alternatively, you also have a benefit to going further out. So again, like with the upgrading itself, it's all a balancing act as to how you actually want to do it. But that, that is all of the complicated bits, so let's actually do a scan. Now all we need to do is just simply start to drive, and anything within 100 meters it will hopefully find here, and let's uh, just kind of keep going, and we should find, oh, it's checking, running scans, checking, checking, come on, you can do it, find something good, oh, there it goes, and it was quite close too, there we are, see, once it does find something, it shows it in a big red bubble, and as you can see now here, if we break, it's showing us a couple of things. How close we are, so we're currently 47 meters away, and that science prediction I was mentioning from the upgrade menu, so the prediction accuracy, right now the prediction is normal. And so it's not really gonna give us a huge amount of science, but it will give us some. So you may wanna hold off. You may not want to scan this thing. You may wanna wait until you find a really, really great scientific prediction thing here. And yeah, again, our prediction is 10% confident in it. So if we actually do go over to it, now you may notice there's actually something in the center of our little dome there. And that is something new added into the mod with the recent addition. And that is an actual rock. That's what we're going to scan. And you'll notice as we get closer, the dome is getting smaller and smaller as it's, you know, leading us into where the anomaly is. And once we drive our rover into the bubble, there we go, it is green. Excellent, so let's park. And you'll notice, of course, here we do have our lovely little rock that we're going to be scanning here. That is our science. And you'll notice this changed right here. Our scientific potential now is normal. It knows because we've gotten so close, it's no longer a 10% confident prediction. It is the actual prediction because we are right here. So it's only going to give us a normal amount of uh, data to analyze, which, you know, is all right. So let's actually just go ahead and analyze this science. So you click that large button and then hit confirm. Now we can cancel and then reset the science spot and that will start the experiment all over again. But let's just go ahead and confirm. And there we go, we got out of this 54.7 science. Now we could of course keep that or chuck it or transmit it, whatever you wanna do. Let's keep that data for right now and let's actually start driving a little bit more to find another. And hopefully find maybe one that's better and bigger and more awesome, but who knows? It sometimes takes a while for to find something interesting. And like I said, for the, oh, we found, oh, science prediction, hi. Oh, hello, all right. So that one's telling us to go back up on that direction there. So back roughly the way we came. Hmm, so it's actually gonna be fairly close to my landing spot, but uh, again, you have to go a pretty large distance to actually notice a benefit from your uh, landing distance. So let's get in close to it. Science prediction is high, which is good. So let's roll in. Now stop. And now what we can do here is actually right now, remember, we still have that other experiment on board. So if we go and review that thing, we know that we got 54 science from that. Now we could transmit it, keep it, whatever you wanna do. Let's just go ahead and transmit that data. So that was, you know, 57 data. And there we are, it's done. So if we wanted to analyze this right now, this should be hopefully more than 57. So let's go and do it. Ah, see, it was only 46. That is interesting. I'm wondering why it, it should have possibly been more, but again, it's all numbers here. It, I don't know what the equation is for finding things, but technically that should have been more. But oh well, what are you gonna do? Now again, once we find other anomalies, if we continue to scan and go that, oh, I'm break, 
breaking. No wonder I'm not moving. And go this way. Ooh, now it actually may have been less because I believe my landing spot was over there by that rock. As I was, remember being closer to that valley, so that might be why it was less over there. That could potentially be it. I really should have put a marker near where I was. <laughs> Ooh, we got a very low. Where is it? Where's the red? Oh my, it just keeps asking us back there. And that one is really not going to be good, because honestly, yeah, that's probably going to be nearly dead on where I landed, so that's definitely not going to give me much science. So what we can do is, yeah, we can get closer and actually scan this thing to get the actual prediction, because right now it's very low, so that probably wouldn't give us much science at all. And so, oh, see, now that we're closer, it's actually saying that it's normal is the actual, which is quite interesting. But still, that's not going to give us a huge amount of data. So if you didn't want to actually use this science spot anymore, all you need to do is reset it here. And then we can do another. It's just going to take another scan and you're going to have to go someplace else to find it. And that's something, again, you're going to have to keep in mind. It's all a balancing act with this because you don't want to scan every anomaly you come up against because, again, you have that decay limit. And you're also going to want to go out further from your landing spot to find better anomalies. So it might be worth turning off your UI for a while, just driving away, so away from wherever you landed, then turning it back on to find some scientific anomalies and go for the high potential scientific anomalies. You really don't want to go for normal or low unless you're desperate for science. Again, it's all a balancing act of what you think is worth actually going for. But I really enjoy that. Again, it adds in an interactive and engaging element to science where you actually have to make the choice. Do I want to research this? Or do I want to move on to something else? And that is just fun. Now, uh, that is really pretty much everything I need to go over for this. Uh, the rest of the mod is basically doing this. Now, I probably should mention, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but it's kind of self-explanatory. This only works for rovers. You have to be a rover. <laughs> if you are in the, and also besides being a rover, you have to be on the ground. So even if you are a rover, but you're in atmosphere, you're not going to be able to scan for things. You have to have rover wheels, and you have to actually be touching the ground to actually do the science. So that is something that I probably should mention. And other than that, the uh, mod maker is wanting to add new features right now, uh, since they are resurrecting it, which I'm very, very happy about. Oh, it's only normal. Well, that's unfortunate. Reset. Uh, but yeah, it's a really fun mod. I love it because, again, it just does make it so much more interactive, and I find that fun. So if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, i definitely say to go and give it a try. And uh, you can find it in the link in the description, of course, as always. And I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode today, and that you do, of course, come back for the next when we will hopefully be looking at yet another wonderful mod but until that time i thank you for watching my friends and as always have a good one Ooh, this is actually a different kind of rock than i've seen previously oh look at it cool different rock yay <laughs> science all right guys later